Right. Hi, guys. I'm, uh, I'm Abilene. I'm Patrick. Uh, we work for Etsy up in New York. Um, well, I, work in, I, live, I live in Arkansas. He lives in New York. I work in Berkeley. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about OpSchool. Uh, it's a project that we started uh, almost six months ago now. Uh, okay, right. And you know, where we've been going, what's happening with it, and what the deal is. Um, so the, the, the project itself is something we decided to start because we're having a very difficult time hiring operations engineers. We looked, we've, you know, we're always looking to hire operations engineers. I heard a couple of people today looking to hire operations people. And it's a very, very difficult problem. It's something that, um, that companies spend a lot of time on, spend a lot of money on. And it seems there's, when we were, when we were talking about it, we found there were two problems that we, that really needed to address. The first was that there are a lot of people out there who are happy to give you their resume and say, I want to work for you. I want to do operation stuff. But they always seem to be missing, uh, you know, key components of, of information and knowledge. Uh, they just they just don't know, and it's not through any fault of their own. It's just that, as an industry, we've done a very poor job of of educating operations people. Uh, and the other problem is that when you do find good people, there's very very few of them. So how do you how do you really get around this? How do you solve this problem? Um, and that's where school came in. I think it was uh, last July at Velocity Conference uh, in Santa Clara. I spoke to a couple of people and said, hey, I really think we need to formalize this. We really need to improve the state of operations education. And everyone said, yeah, it's a great idea. Let's do it. And then there was nothing. <laughs> and and that's, that's kind of the way it's been. Everyone really, everyone you speak to, everyone you tell the story to will say, yes, yeah, really great idea. We really need to do something. Um, but who has the time to do it? Who can really do it? Who can spend you know, the energy to do it? Um, we were really lucky. Um, the, uh, the management at Etsy, uh, John Alspa, Mike Rimbetsi, uh, they said, yes, we have to do this. They realized the importance of this. And they gave us time at work to start this off and get it going. Uh, so that's, that's kind of where we came from. Um, the history of op school, I've spoken about it a few times before. It's, it's, it's very long. You know, it's a, for me personally, this is a, this, this is a very important thing because um, it, the way I see operations going, um, we are starving the industry. Um, there's, there's more positions coming up than we have people to fill them. If you look at uh, surveys that have been done, like the, uh, the SAGE salary survey, I don't know if anyone remembers that. Um, I think it's now the Lisa salary survey. Um, if you look over the last sort of five years, there you can see there's a huge drop off in the number of people responding to the survey, the number of people that we can infer who are who are, are entering the industry, uh, and that's a really bad thing. We really need more people coming in. We need more people learning operations, and op school is all about how do you do it? How do we teach people? So I have a question: uh, How many people here? Uh, are systems administrators or, or operations engineers? No, so about the third, half third. Okay, all those people who have their hands up, how many of you have a degree in systems administration? Aha, <laughs> trick question. <laughs> there are very, very few degrees in systems administration. RIT does one, Michigan Tech, Oslo. That's really about it. There are a couple other schools that are trying, they're looking at it, but this is something that educators have had a very difficult time trying to teach. It's not just that um, it's, it's not popular. Of course, everyone, you know, there's a lot of demand for this kind of stuff. It's just something that's very difficult to teach. How many people here are, uh, regardless of what, what you do, how many people here are self-taught? Oh, more people than our systems administrators. This is great. So this is, this is one of the reasons we, you know, me too. You know, I don't have a degree. I'm very open about this. Um, this is one of the reasons that we really wanted to push off school hard is because uh, so many people come into our industry who are self-taught. They, they spend time, they put the effort in, they put the energy in. And even if you go to school, you still have to, of course, put the same amount of time and effort and energy in to learning and becoming good at what you do. But we need more resources to do it. We need more places. We need somewhere people can go to and say, this, if I read this content, if I watch the videos on this site, if I follow the instructions, and I put the time and energy in and I learn about this stuff, I can be a good operations engineer too. So that's, that's kind of where we started and what we're trying to do. Um, I have been running the 
sort of the open source side of it. The whole project, of course, you know, the, the curriculum, everything is open and free for anyone who wants to read it. Um, anyone can make contributions to it. Uh, we have an, a mailing list where we discuss things. Um, I've been kind of working through that and uh, just trying to get more contributors in, trying to get people in to add more content to the site. We're doing really well. There's a lot of stuff already on there. Um, we're just trying to get trying to get more. Patrick has been taking the content and been doing a ton of really cool stuff at Etsy on the sort of the, the other side of it, and I'm going to let him. Right. So one of the things we had kind of discussed when we were starting this project is we realized that most of us have come to the calling of being a systems administrator or an operations engineer, whatever you want to call it, uh, basically through our own motivation. We've kind of either fallen into it and said, all right, that's really cool. I'm just going to start learning all I can about it. Or, uh, you know, we had some mentor that really, you know, pushed us in the right direction. But regardless, a lot of us learn kind of in a piecemeal way. We're not necessarily going to gain as much out of a four-year degree program as we might out of just hacking on our computers and reading, you know, a man page here or there. So um, one of the focuses of the project is that the curriculum is very um, atomic. So the idea is we have it broken up basically into 101, 201, 301 type sections. So you basically have like beginners, intermediate, and, and advanced courses. So we'll discuss, you know, there might be a topic like MySQL fundamentals, right? Well, you can start with a 101 there. And of course, there's a lot more on top of that. We can start talking about indices and, uh, you know, InnoDB tunings and stuff like that and, and 201. And then 30, 301, we can just go to town and talk about really any subject at all. Um, so we're trying to develop it so that it's not linear. You don't have to start taking the course and, f and do everything in order and complete it. You can just say, I know a lot of this stuff here, but this one topic I'm not really sure about. Just jump into it, and it starts with here's what you need to know uh, from the beginning, and you can just sort of work through that tree and uh, and learn as you go. So that's one of the kind of structures we have, and I encourage everyone to go to the website and just see how it's laid out. Um, even if you're not going to contribute, just check it out. There's a lot of content on there already. What I'm doing at Etsy is, um, for one, I'm spearheading uh, the the non-written part of the curriculum. So there's, of course, it, there's a lot of lot to be gained from just reading, but there's also a lot to be gained, I think, from seeing people do operations work, right? So um, we've partnered with O'Reilly, and they've come in and set up studio, basically, in our in our office. And we're producing videos that cover each of the topics that we're discussing in the curriculum um, with us getting in front of the camera and explaining how these things work. And then actually opening up a terminal and just starting to, you know, go through, let's say, I did a segment on package management 101. So here's what RPM is. Here's what YUM is. I focused on Red Hat for this one, but here's what packages. These are dependencies. I go through, you know, installing packages, removing them, finding metadata, all that kind of stuff. And it's all real time. It's all right there on the terminal. So I think it's a really good way to learn. The other thing I'm doing is... Um, we're bringing in interns. I have one right now from RIT, and we're trying to start to use them as guinea pigs, so to speak, for the curriculum. So if there's a task that I want an intern to, to learn that they might not know anything about, I can send them to the curriculum and say, all right, read the section, come back, see if you can get the work done. If you can, awesome. If not, tell me what was missing from that. Can we improve it? Is there something we completely glossed over altogether? So um, those are like kind of the two things that I'm working on primarily. And just going and talking with Aveline and getting the word out. So we don't actually have any slides, but we feel like this is kind of a topic that should be discussed because there's a lot of room for growth. We have things like, um, you know, now that we have the written curriculum, we want to find ways to test people. How do we evaluate uh, you on what you have absorbed out of the lessons? So we're trying to figure out good ways to do that. Um, we're thinking about experimenting with virtual machines. Let's say we, we break a virtual machine in a certain way that goes along with the curriculum. You have to go and actually find out what's wrong with it and fix it. Uh, we're, we're thinking about things like uh, micro teaching, where you have uh, a course for a plat we'll have a course for a platform basically. <coughs> Students will submit questions and people can donate their time. So let's say you only have 10 minutes in your day, but you're an expert on something. You, you can just go and grab that ticket, so to speak. We'll probably have it sort of a ticket type system where you grab that, uh, that question, you answer it, and then it gets added to a knowledge base for future students to reference. So really, the only way this is going to succeed is if 
everyone contributes because we're not going to be able to do this ourselves. Yeah. And I think that there's a lot to be gained from the massively open online course type of uh, style that we're going for. And yeah. yeah, do you have anything? Yeah, I mean, I think I've, I, I, I hinted at it before, but the whole goal of this, this project is to get more operations engineers out of this. We want to keep it free, we want to keep it open, we want to keep it available to everybody. And we really want to have this as a central place you can go to to really learn about what it means to be an operations engineer. Um, I'm on the, uh, the program committee for LISA this year, which is in November. Uh, little shout out there. Um, but one of the things that we've been talking about uh, and, and was raised was that uh, there's, there's a lot of Also, like good engineering principles, um, how to measure, how to how to do your work, how to follow good processes, make things repeatable, all that kind of stuff. Um, the, the a lot of the stuff that that we take for granted, that just isn't taught. That a lot of us came in and learned because good mentors taught us how to do it. We saw the people doing it, um, and so far this is going really well. We're, we're we're starting to make an impact. There are people who are starting to look at this, starting to read this, um, and. And so we just want to, we want to keep going. Um, we really want to open this up to, to questions, because we're hoping that a lot of people have questions. I've seen a couple of hands already. Um, uh, so uh, actually, first, a show of hands. Who's actually been to opschool.org, seen the curriculum? Whoa. Wow. OK. Holy crap. OK, <laughs> so we're for, actually, for the people yeah, online. Apparently, everyone yeah. here already knows about it, yes. and we're just wasting everyone's time. So uh, <laughs> let's open it up to questions. And, uh, and yeah. just a, a, a quick thing, it would be great if you have questions if you Come up to the front because the microphone can't pick up people in the back. Yeah. And if you're if you don't really want to do that, that's cool. If our I can, if we, can repeat, we can repeat the question. The question. I completely fine. understand. Awesome. I am I am physically impaired right now. I have sprained my ankle. So if you don't want to walk up, I understand that too. Just speak loudly and I'll repeat the question. You want to show your website on the screen while people ask questions? Patrick can do yeah, that. I can, he knows I can set that up. Sure. <laughs> Wait, actually, do I have internet? <laughs> yeah, you probably don't have internet. Oh, right, I do, because I jerry-rigged this. <laughs> All right. Let's see. So there was a question. There, there, there was a question. There was a question um, at the back and then at the front. And go on. Right. So the question is, right now it's free. Do we have plans to charge it, charge for it? Uh, it is free. The entire content is licensed under Creative Commons. It is now and it always will be. Um, everything on it will be free. Everything on the website, you'll be able to go there and take a look at it, use it, do whatever you want with it. If you want to take the material and teach it to other people in your company, uh, show it to your friends, have a meetup like this, go through it, whatever you want, let's do it. We want to get more people who, to be operations engineers. This is not something we want to make a profit off. Um, Patrick mentioned the relationship we have with O'Reilly Media uh, to make the videos. Uh, O'Reilly is going to charge a subscription fee to watch them. Um, I wish those were free, but it costs O'Reilly a lot of money to make them. Um, so we haven't yet put those first videos online. They will hopefully be up really soon. We're going to work out the cheapest, best way to, to get those out there uh, so that people can watch those. And that that is the only thing, as far as we know right now, that is going to have any any cost associated with it, and that is only so O'Reilly can can sort of recoup their stuff. Um, O'Reilly did offer to pay us royalties for our work and the other people who make videos. We're donating donating all of those to educational charities um, that help that help people read, learn, write, <laughs> overcome educational difficulties. A lot of stuff. Um, so this is this is in no way intended to ever be anything that makes us. Yes, and, and, a, nice. and another shout out. <laughs> <laughs> and another shout out. Uh, well, we're we're doing another round. We did our first round of videos, which will be available soon. Um, they're going through editing right now. We're gonna be doing another round, March 11th through 15th in Brooklyn, at our offices. Obviously, it's a bit of a hike for most of you guys, but 
if anyone wants to come up and uh, you know teach a topic, we'd be more than happy to have you as guest speakers. Uh, we're trying to actually move more toward that type of setup where we kind of bring in outsiders because there are only just so many of only just so much time we can spare really to, right. to record videos and come up with content. So we have some really great contributors right now. And we're looking for more. How open are you to video content from outside? How Very open? massively open. Right. Massively open to content from outside. So if you have content that's already video content that you want incorporated into optical, yes, we'll take it. Not just video content, written content as well. We've approached um, many, uh, it's probably in the low 20s of people I've spoken to who have written blog posts, really good articles, really good tutorials and things, and asked them to contribute. Some don't have very much time, some don't want to, but there are people who want to, and we're very open to that. We like bringing people in. Um, so it's very cool. How did you market your internship? How did we market our internship, Patrick? Um, I just called it a web, web ops co-op. It's uh, I didn't really market it toward op school specifically, although I did say if you do join, you'll be working with us on I don't know if I actually addressed out school, but I basically kind of yeah. explained what the project was a little bit in the job listing. Yeah. And I said you'll be you'll be responsible for being a part of this. So yeah. Uh, this was the first time we did it. Yeah, so I think I think what's key is that if you really want to get you know good people, for us we just marketed it as this is just a straight up web ops co op. You know this you're going to learn a ton here, right? And then that was kind of on the side, so it didn't feel like they're just being you know use the skinny pigs or that's all they're going to be working on because that's definitely not the case. So I'd say just kind of keep your job description the same as it would be otherwise and maybe throw in a little off school shit out there. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Did you target in particular oh, um, yes. We, well, RIT actually does have um, management information systems programs, uh, CompSci, of course, and they have some interesting crossovers. So I think I targeted maybe eight different majors, minors, kind of like there's a whole swath of yeah. uh, majors there that kind of fit the bill. So, how many people did we have applied the first time? Well, I think we only we were probably only open for a couple of weeks, and I think we got maybe like twenty or twenty-five. So, yeah. Yeah. so if you're looking for interns, it's there's a lot of people out there who are looking for opportunities to uh, to, to learn um, in the back. Uh, do you plan to tailor any of this or focus it on high school students? Or maybe <laughs> he does. Okay. Yes. So the question is, do we plan to tailor any of this to high schools um, and and high school level, you know, sort of younger kids, people pre college, basically, right? So um, and you know, how will we work with O'Reilly for for that kind of stuff? The answer is yes. Um, this is something I'm very very passionate about. Um, once I, I feel that once somebody gets to you know being in their early twenties. There, there's a huge opportunity that's been missed. Anyone can become a systems administrator. I know people who are in their 30s who decide, I want to become a systems administrator. I want to become an operations engineer. And then they go and do it. That's great. Um, but there are, there are people in school right now who could be really good you know, engineers. They have that mindset. They, they like to take things apart. They like to put them back together again, figure out how things work, uh, break things when, uh, and then fix them, and, and all that kind of stuff that, that we all enjoy, enjoy doing, making things from nothing. Uh, and we really do want to target high schools. This has been something that's been talked about heavily. Nothing's happened on the op school side yet. Um, there's uh, uh, a, a wonderful, a wonderful woman in Portland, Selena Deckelman, who's been working with uh, schools and teachers to find out what it is teachers need, uh, what it is that would help them teach this kind of stuff to students. So it's something we're actively thinking about. Um, we haven't. We just haven't had the resources to really talk about it or, or put put the energy into it yet. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, we will soon. Um, this will, like I said, this is this is intended to provide people information on a whole career. Right. This is a whole thing that isn't talked about yet in schools. Um, what I've personally done is I've gone to local schools in my area. Um, and spoken at career days and said, "Hey, this is hey kids, this is what I do," um, and there are kids that are interested. This is you know, you show them this stuff, and they're like, "Hey, I kind of like working with computers. I could do that too." Um, and so, yeah, if if you want to that, if if somebody is interested in doing that, I'd say, 
you know, at least go find a school, talk at a career day, and explain what this is. And it's a start. There's a question up here. Oh, one, one other thing, actually. O'Reilly has agreed to provide the, uh, the videos free of charge to registered charitable organizations, as long as we provide them with the names. Of the names. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So if there is a registered charitable organization that you know wants to teach this stuff to kids or, or, or other groups, let us know. We'll, we'll, we'll work it out. So how are you going to exercise quality control over the content that's submitted? Will it be wiki-like? Will people be able to edit, edit it? Or if there are videos, you okay. may not choose to include them because they don't meet the Absolutely. quality standard? Right. So the question was, how do we exercise quality control? There's a lot of incoming information. How do you really manage that? Um, we have two ways. I'll let Patrick talk about the videos in a minute. Um, the, for the written content, um, all of this is uh, on GitHub, github.com slash opschool. Uh, we have uh, uh, a couple of people who act as editors for material that comes in. So we work with people. When people submit stuff, uh, they, you know, they send us a pull request, and we work through it. We look for simple things like grammatical errors. We look for technical errors. Uh, and everyone who's done this so far, you know, we haven't we haven't had a single submission come in that hasn't had to be edited, but that's good because it means that the editor's doing a good job. Um, you know, we're all human; we all make mistakes, and we we double check everything. Um, and everyone has always been very open to, hey, you know, I submitted something, but you guys have feedback. That's great. Let's let's fix it and and make things better. Um, we can talk about that. Video. Yeah, the videos are a little tougher, obviously. Um, right now, we're sort of creating our own, so we're obviously vetting the content as we go. Um, there is there is a process of we get the first cuts, we look at them, if it doesn't make sense, we want to do reshoots or there's something we need to cut, voiceover, whatever, we, we, we make sure that that content gets fixed before it goes out. As far as outside content, um, we haven't had any official submissions yet that, that I know of, yet. so yeah. um, I guess that's a bridge we'll cross when we come to it, but we will obviously be vetting content before it goes out yeah. uh, in terms of video. and for. Again, for the, the written contributions, it's we will check things, but I, everyone else can check too because yeah. it's pure edited. So you grab the GitHub repo, which by the way is, uh, I guess we didn't explain that, but if you go here and you go to, there should be a link on how to there, contribute. There's a link like they show on GitHub. Show on GitHub right now. Yeah. yeah. So, right. Yeah. so well, yeah, anyways, you, down there. Yeah, you can um, do it. And, and so yeah, yeah, just feel free to grab it and submit a pull request to have it changed. So. Is there a sort of jobs board? Seems like the next step, right? Aha. So mm. this is this is you know another very common question. Like, what's the next step? What are we going to do with this? Uh, a jobs board would, I think, be a really good idea. That's something we've talked about. Uh, we've talked about having some kind of process where people go through and um, they can show that they've learned what what they should have from this. Um, the question of certification came up. Um, we're not too sure about that. At the moment, uh, very hesitant because um, there's a lot of certification in our industry. How do you tell what's good? You know, if if anyone's seen that the uh, the XKCD where they're talking about standards and somebody says, "Hey, there's 14 competing standards. Let's make a standard to unify them all." And the last frame is now there were 15 competing standards. So <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very much like that in our industry, right? You have you have a lot of different certifications. Uh, a lot of people trying to do a very good job. No. I don't mean any you know, disrespect to the certifications that are out there. It's just something that's very hard to, to understand and say what's good about this. So what we want before we have a jobs board is we want a way that people can look at this material, work through it, and then show that they've learned something, either working with a mentor or um, some, some kind of process, mm -hmm. uh, some kind of automated testing, some kind of something to show, show that they understand the content, and then they can advertise. You know, hey, I'm looking for a job, and then people can also come in and say, hey, we're looking for, you know, junior operations engineers or whoever. Um, and yeah, that would be great. Again, it's it's one of those things that's that's really good. We really want to do. If you have the time to do it, come contribute. Sorry, just before we take another question. Um, if you're watching the stream, if you hop into OpSchool, pound OpSchool on Freenode IRC, we've got people here monitoring that channel and can pass along your questions. And by people, I mean Carolyn. <laughs> <There you laughs> All right, sorry, go ahead, Peter. 
Oh, so you're mentioning micro teaching. Do you have um, more ideas about how you would implement that and how people would participate? Yeah, so actually, I think one of the things that we're struggling with a little bit is the actual implementation. Like, uh, if anyone has any ideas for like awesome courseware solutions that would do wonders for this, uh, we just heard of um, what was the discuss platform? Um, discourse. Discourse. discourse yeah. 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 Heard of discourse, which we definitely want to give a try. Um, thought about maybe like a Quora forum or something, um, but we haven't really found anything that seems to totally fit the bill yet that we've actually yeah. tested. So um, I think once we get the right platform, we're, we're definitely to... aiming. We're, we're definitely aiming toward that kind of like you know queuing system where we can answer questions as they come in, right. but then also the the main key to that is to contribute it back to a knowledge base so that you can search through previously answered questions and get. Right. Uh, you know, if it's already been answered, why well, answer it again? So exactly. And um, well, it, it it can it, it doesn't it doesn't. Um, the way it differentiates is that it's was, how does that differ from Stack Exchange? Oh yeah, it's tied directly to the curriculum. So you can say like I was looking at you know this particular uh, section, this section DNS. like I was looking at DNS one hundred and one, and I got to this stage and I don't know what's going on. Maybe I'm broken or something. If if that's the case. So um, it's just more targeted toward the curriculum itself. We're not trying to replace uh, Stack, Stack Overflow or whatever. Yeah. So. I mean, in all honesty, um, going back to my own you know, learning process, sites like you know, Stack Exchange or back in the day before they existed, you know, the little help articles in, in like PC World magazine and things that you read through and stuff, that was really great, right? So what we want to do is we do want to bring some of that element in where people can ask questions specifically about learning to be an operations engineer um, and and then go and then have people help with that. There is, um, I should mention, uh, LOPSA has a really great mentorship program, and if anyone's heard of that, um, but they pair people who want to learn about specific things um, with mentors who, who want to teach them. Uh, and we've been talking with them. We spoke to some of those guys at Lisa in December, and um, we may do something there um, soon. Any other questions? Ooh, three hands went up. OK, one. <laughs> um, I think it's one of the problems that I've noticed with a lot of courses is so, a lot of these courses are trying to show what they're doing. Why should I go? Um, I don't know if it's because they look at videos or if it's almost free to have a good place for all the But, you know, why would I care about public education? Knowing that they, I mean, is there any place within the course where you know, the principal or something? Well, I think it's like the South 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 Right. A lot of times, people don't know what the end goal is. What can I achieve if I follow this this curriculum? What do I get out of it? Right. It's uh, and and that's a very good question. It's and it's it's something that at least for operations has been very hard to describe for a long time. Um, it's been a profession that uh, a lot of people are in, but have a hard time kind of nailing down. Like, what is it you do? Well, we fix computers. Oh, so you're like the help desk? No, no, not really the help desk. A little bigger than the help desk. A little like you know. Um, but it, it, it has been something that's difficult to nail down. There is a section in, in here where we try and explain what it means to be an operations engineer. Uh, and if you become an operations engineer, uh, what kind of career that is, like what it entails. It does entail things like being on call. Uh, it does entail uh, you know, learning a great deal about a great deal of, of, of things, um, you know, having some relative amount of job security because there's such high demand. Um, operations engineers are generally generally well paid. Um, not always true, unfortunately. Um, but we try and explain a lot of that stuff here. There and there is, yeah. The, with the videos we've done with O'Reilly, one of them is a career section that explains all the different kinds of things that come under operations engineer, systems administration, network engineer, security engineer, storage engineers, all kinds of stuff. Um, so we do try and go into that kind of information uh, and give people. Um, descriptions of what it's like 
when you don't know what it's like. You know, it's like, what is a storage engineer? What is a systems administrator? So we do try and explain that um, on the site. Um, uh, sorry, I'm going to take one from IRC. I'm gonna okay, yes, please, Nathan. I'm just going to bump the oh, line and it. say, I know you're here, but there's people on the web, and they're more important. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, if, if or when you do assessments, are there plans to partner with someone to help with those assessments, like the Khan Academy or someone like that? Do you guys put any thought into that? Um, we haven't actually yet. This is something that we're in the very early stages of looking at. I don't know if Patrick's thought about it. Um, yeah, we we're really not. It's it's a very difficult thing too because we want to avoid like the certificate. We don't want to call it a certification, but we don't also want to create a four-year university curriculum that can be tested and examined, and you can have examinations on. So uh, we're trying to find like a good balance. middle ground. Yeah, yeah, a good balance where we can we can strike there, yeah. but. Yeah. Uh, if someone has ideas, yeah, please yeah. please contribute to the mailing list on these, uh, especially on these um, sort of logistical issues, because these are the things we're struggling with the most at this point. Yeah. Um, at the back. Um, Okay. Excellent. So I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let, I'll repeat them and I'll let Patrick answer them. So the sure. question, the questions, two questions were, are we doing anything specifically to encourage young women to become engineers, uh, which is uh, you know something that is very important and I think a lot of us care about. Um, and the second question was something I've already forgotten. <laughs> Well, let's, oh. say, let's say the first one first. That's the first yeah. one, then we'll do the second one. Okay, go. Uh, so, yes. Um, many of you may have noticed that there was recently uh, an article on Hacker News, I believe, about, or really posted all over the place, but um, about how Etsy has uh, scaled the number of engineer, uh, with female engineers at the company by 500% in the last couple of years. And we want to bring that culture also to op school. Um, Tim O'Reilly actually directly pointed to that and said, you should do an ops school video on that. So uh, we thought that's a really good idea. And we have a lot of female engineers that, have, that, are, that are jumping on to, to, uh, to help with this. So definitely expect that there will be content on ops school. There will be videos related to this. And um, we're, we're always you know, happy to talk to, to groups of women about this you know, whenever possible. Yeah. Um, second question. Ah, so the, the question is, will we have meetups uh, about the people who have already completed the curriculum, and if, if they have feedback, can they you know contribute it back? Um, we'd love to, absolutely. Uh, I think there needs to be a certain critical mass behind people that are actually taking the courses rather than just contributing. I feel like there's a lot in the contribution end right now, and we need to get yeah. people starting to actually uh, learn from it. But absolutely, um, that's that's... We actually thought right to you know to start um, kind of at the beginning with just we're all at a big conference let's have a birds of a feather or something on it so we can just you know kind of hammer it out for a while and uh, we'll move that into localized meetups later. There was another question. So I have three questions one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> three questions one at a time. Okay, let's go. Can we do four questions? <laughs> I go to some student, wedding student, who's going to ask me how many man hours I have to put in to learn all this stuff where I am going to be considered proficient enough to be hired by any company. Do you have any answer to that? Yes. Um, we've. Oh, the, the question, by the way, was uh, if, if you have a student come up to you and say, how many man hours does it take to become proficient in a technology or to be a Fully fledged professional system. Man. I, that is that is a difficult question to answer because <clears throat> it varies so so widely by by who's doing the learning. Um, we've sp spoken to that we have estimates and they're based on uh, 
speaking to people who have self-taught themselves. So using something like this, but having previously done it themselves. Um, and the best estimates that we can come up with is somewhere around three months to six months of putting in time and effort to learning this as a trade should be, if, you're, if you put the time and energy in and, and you really want to do it, you should be able to become proficient enough at least to get um, through interviews as a junior system. Like we're talking, we are talking right at the sort of the entry level, but that's kind of the, the, the scale we're going for. Um, some people say that sounds like an incredibly long time, like how can I put in so much time to learn this stuff? Um, and my response is usually, well, the alternative, uh, of course, is that um, you know, there are, there are other learning avenues you can take. You can go to college, you can go to you know, two year college, you can go to uh, do a bachelor's degree. There are other things you can do that also take a long time. Um, so learning, this isn't, uh, you know, as much as I would like it to be a really quick win to help a lot of people become operations engineers really quickly, um, it, it, it is still something that takes time and energy and effort from people who are dedicated and really want to try and do this. Okay. Second question. Uh, I know this is open source, but um, what kind of open source can this material be taken and incorporated into um, um, a university syllabus? Who is charging the money? Is it possible or not? It, the question is, can the curriculum be taken to a uh, university, for instance, that would be charging for it? Um, yeah. And well, the curriculum is created, it's, it's all licensed under Creative Commons. The goal is to have this be open and free. So if a university wants to take it, they, they can. They can take it and they can charge for it. The trade-off is that they then have to say, well, this material came from opschool.org, where anyone can go and learn it for free. Um, this, is, this is not intended to undermine university education. The universities teach a, a lot of great stuff. Um, this is intended to be um, sort of uh, another opportunity, another avenue of learning. Um, so for people who don't want to go to university or are unable to go to university, um, that this can pro hopefully provide a really valuable place to learn. Or even once you've finished university, even once I'm you sure finish, you're yeah. going to be coming back here to learn something new. So. Yeah. Okay. Third question. Then. Third question. Um, I don't know what kind of agreement you have with O'Reilly, but if somebody wants to create a um, course syllabus at Udemy using this uh, material, how open or is it possible? If it is possible, how open is, are you going to? Uh, the videos themselves uh, are 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 paid content, uh, subscription content, with some exceptions. Like we can provide them to charitable organizations. We can use them uh, for internal programs. But by and large, those will you, you can't take the content and freely distribute it yeah. um, for now. So yeah. no, the content like produced by the presenter. We well, you, we can take the con. We will take the con, the written content, and yeah, place yeah. it on online. That's absolutely going to happen. Yeah. But th this is this is really the videos are just supplemental on top of what we already have. They're not meant to replace the content. We really want to basically take the transcripts of what we talked about and just stick them in written form. So, yeah. Um, yeah. it's kind of just a way to. Some people like learning visually and auditorily. So you know, you see the terminal, you see people typing, you listen to them talking, yeah. and that's perfectly you know a re great way to learn, in my opinion, probably the best. So. Yeah. Um, for those people, the videos will work very well. If you're fine with just learning uh, off, off reading, then that's yeah. fine too. And the structure of this is, is you know, if you look through some of the, the material here, uh, what we're trying to do is not just have it like a man page. That's a little bit boring. I mean, I, I like man pages, but I don't really want that to be something I, I learn everything from. Um, those are great references. This is designed to be um, tutorial-like, I think is the best way we can sure. put it. So you look at it, it says, you know, there's a section on on like RPMs and like package management. Or how it go? It walks you through how you install packages, what they do, and on, and and how to uninstall packages, look at files, all that, all that. And non-technical stuff, stuff all, like a lot of or I guess it's all technical, but yeah. you know, there's stuff like capacity skills. planning, yeah. which are more uh, you know abstract concepts that you yeah. absolutely must That's grasp to be a, a good engineer, but which are not things you can just type man capacity planning. So. Okay, I think we. <laughs> I'm looking at the clock. I think we have time for a couple more questions. I saw a few hands. I really just wanted to make one comment, and it has to do with certifications. Having come from the Microsoft world, I have worked with so many people who are good on paper, and they knew nothing. So I'm not a really big fan of certification anymore in the sense that I want to see you do something for me. Yeah. 
So the, the point was that, you know, coming from a Microsoft world, um, there are so many people people who are really good on paper and then, you know, kind of not able to perform. This is the, the fear we have with certifications. Like if we introduce an obstacle certification, we may end up with people being like that. They just go through, find ways to work around, and not really learn, but get the certification. We don't really want that. Um, so one of the things that, that we're also talking with, with other organizations about is improving the interview process. Like we want to teach people as part of this how to interview for a job. Because that's a pretty hard skill. Like it's it's not you don't just like walk into an interview and sit down and answer a few questions, then you have a job. It's there's actually you have to put some thought behind it and think about it and, and prepare yourself. Um, and from an employer side, you know, at, at Etsy we've we're, we're changing the way we do interviews. A lot of our interviews, it's not just asking technical questions. There's a lot of um, you know actually having people show that they understand concepts and and ideas and they have the knowledge. So. There, there's certainly a lot of that, a lot of that involved. Um, there was one there. Yes. Um, so the question is, do we? Patch have, is welcome. Patch is welcome. <laughs> it's uh, uh, the question is, do we have um, any plans to do this in languages other in, other than English? Yes, we do. We have had people um, uh, from. Other countries, um, in fact, I'm talking to somebody at, university, at, at uh, Ghent University in Belgium um, who is really keen on, on using this material and putting more of his uh, coursework into op school. Um, and he also wants to have it in another language. Um, so there, there is um, a desire to do that. But as Patrick said, Patch is welcome. We, I don't speak any other language fluently, to be quite <laughs> honest. So I can't help there. But yeah. we, hope, we hope that that can, that can be done, definitely. Um, we'll be around at the hour. Yeah, uh, one, one more from IRC. Yeah. Sorry, we're scrolling back. <laughs> there it is. What are your long term goals? Is this just a Wikipedia for Ops Education? What are our long term goals? Is this just a Wikipedia for Ops Education? No, definitely not a Wikipedia for Ops Education. The long term goal is to have this be uh, the place that you can go to um, to learn how to be an operations engineer. It's the place you can go to if you want to refresh your knowledge on a particular subject. Uh, it's a place you can go to, to, uh, to really be able to show other people that you understand what it is to be an operations engineer in, in, in every sense of the word, that you understand, like Patrick said, a lot of the soft skills, capacity planning, uh, things like that, and also a lot of the hard technical skills. Um, and that's why we're working towards having um, you know, the, the proof that someone's gone through this and they understand what they're doing. And that's the... Apart from the contributions, that's the other. That's the other really difficult thing we're trying to overcome right now, and we have a lot yeah. of ideas, a lot of potential, Absolutely. and no, we'd love. Whoever asked the question is, uh, you know, in the current form, that's what it seems like. But we're absolutely trying to focus now that we've got this down. I mean, obviously, you need the stuff on paper to start with. Now that we have this down, we're trying to move into how do we evaluate? How do we, um, you know, provide lab exercises? How do we, uh, you know, basically just yeah. The comprehensive educational uh, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah. So I think we're out of time because I think Theo's up next. Um, we are going to be around this evening. We're probably going to find a bar and go drink heavily. Um, so if anyone would like to um, join us and talk about this more afterwards, find us. We'll be around. Thank you. Thank you.